Peace. Huh. What's happening, good people? This gift here for pay us no mind. And let's talk about the business of digital distribution versus selling music direct to fan. Topics we're gonna cover, discovery, why you need digital distribution, selling direct to fan versus digital distribution, and my advice on how artists should navigate it all. Now, make sure you check the description box for links and discounts on various products and services we recommend. Now, we did a poll where we asked artists, why do they want their music on Spotify? Giving them the options of discovery, royalties, or other. And most said discovery, followed by royalties. Now, the reality of the situation is you have YouTube and social media platforms like Facebook, Instagram, and TikTok, all of which have larger audiences than Spotify. And on those platforms, that's where discovery happens. Now, the issue with those platforms is monetization. YouTube has a monetization threshold. Facebook has a monetization threshold. TikTok is don't call us, we'll call you. So you can't just upload music and start making money. And artists want to monetize immediately where people listen and they make money and they want to move people from the point of discovery to making money. And that is the reason why you do digital distribution and put your music on Spotify and Apple Music and things of that nature. It is to monetize. So you already have people discovering your music on social media and things of that nature. And then you want to move that audience into a space where you can make money. Now, these platforms have their own mechanisms for discovery, but it is like a popular artist getting on Jimmy Fallon or something to that effect where somebody popular gets on something that makes them more popular. Not so much somebody that is not popular gets on something and becomes popular. They fan flames. So if somebody already has something going from what they built on social media or YouTube or something of that nature, then when they get to a Spotify or Apple Music or something like that, it becomes combustible because then they put you in the algorithm. The activity from the fans that you already have lead to you getting on playlists and you getting on algorithmic playlists and recommendations and things of that nature, which helps expose your music to more people. But if you don't already have a pre-existing audience, your music will just be there not getting any activity. Now, when it comes to digital distribution, the focus tends to be on streaming platforms. It tends to be on Spotify and Apple Music and things of that nature. But digital distribution is about far more than that because just as your music gets put in streaming platforms, it gets put on music stores. So you got iTunes, you got Amazon, you got things like Soundtrack Your Brand, which supplies music to like retail chains and things of that nature. So there is a bunch of different things that digital distribution does, as well as global reach, where your music gets distributed to places like Angami and uh, Tencent, where your music becomes accessible to audiences outside of your country. Now, again, you're moving people from discovery to monetization. And when it comes to monetization, there's a reason why people chose to do digital distribution. And that is because these stores, they already have certain things in place. Chief among them, consumer trust. So an artist wants to sell music. You have iTunes. iTunes already has clientele that trust iTunes. These people have already given them their full legal name, their home address, and their credit card information. So what happens on iTunes is what they call zombie buying, where people don't even think. They just click the buy button and it's bought. There is no process to it. They don't have to go and fill out, here's my name, here's my address, because in that process, people are thinking and reconsidering the purchase. So by making it instant, one-click buying, like they have on Amazon, it's just seamless quick purchase. So they already have the consumer trust and that's what makes it easy to sell in those platforms and makes it valuable for artists to have their music available in those platforms. 
Now, when it comes to selling music direct to fan, it is a whole different animal because direct to fan isn't just about whether somebody likes your music or likes you as an artist. It's not just about that. Just because somebody likes you and your music does not mean they're going to trust you to hand over their full legal name, home address, and credit card information with identity theft and all of this different type of stuff that could happen. It doesn't mean that they're going to trust the fact that you are going to give them what they paid for, which is another thing, right? Like maybe I buy this download and I don't get a download. You know, that's, that's always a concern as well. So direct sales requires more of a relationship. You kind of got to cultivate uh, a relationship with an audience before you can get them to buy direct from you. So that is why you take the step of digital distribution first and get your music in stores where you can develop a reputation with an audience to where they'll feel comfortable handing over money to you. So it's like people like Taylor Swift and Olivia Rodrigo can sell direct to fan because they already have the relationship and the consumer trust where people already uh, feel comfortable that they're going to get what they paid for and that their their identity and, and their credit card information, all of that stuff is safe with dealing with these people. And that is the goal, trying to make people feel safe with handing over their money to you. And then on top of that, you have the cost. So with digital distribution, you can get digital distribution for between like $20 to $60 annually for unlimited. And when you compare that to the cost of e-commerce platforms like Wix, Wix charges you $16 a month. That's about $192 annually, plus the cost of a domain name. So on top of that, you have to register and pay for a domain name, Squarespace, charges you $25 a month. That is $276 annually, plus the cost of a domain name. Shopify charges $39 a month. That is $468 annually, plus the cost of a domain name. So if you do not have the clientele that wanna buy from you, and trust your brand, then you would just be bleeding money going the way of e-commerce and trying to sell direct to fan. Because on top of that, you are responsible for customer support. You are responsible for designing a store that looks good enough to where people feel like they're going to get quality from it. You are responsible for creating a checkout flow that will actually convert people. So it is much more of a process. So my advice to artists that want to sell direct to fan, I would say you do digital distribution, but you eliminate streaming platforms. You uncheck Spotify, Apple Music, Tidal, Deezer, and you only leave stores checked, iTunes, Amazon, any other place where they sell music. And then you market and promote your music. And if people are willing to buy it, if people are willing to pay for it, then you have some positive evidence that indicates that it could make sense to go and try to sell music direct to fan. Now you can agree to disagree or agree. As always, y'all can hit me up at pay us no mind on Instagram, at pay us no mind on Twitter, pay us no mind at gmail.com. This is GIF signing off. Pay us no mind. Peace, good people. One.